I am so blessed and humbled and privileged to give the word today. I, I can't just say thank you because words are beyond what the Lord wants. He don't want your, our words. He wants our love. And I know this because even through the trials and the struggles, he's there waiting to, to give you that crown of victory, brothers and sisters, and it's there. So hang on tight. Okay, so give me a minute. Thank you for being here today, and you all could have been doing something else, watching the baseball game or football, whatever's going on. Um, you could have been just sleeping in, but we are privileged, and we are honored that you're all here today. We thank God for your lives, for your families, and for you. So let's just start with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for another day, another day in your name, another day in your glory, another day of blessings that you have been waiting to give us, Lord. May we stand strong and bold in your name. And even when the struggles are, are too hard, Lord, let us be reminded we can rest in your arms because that's where rest is. You give us the strength to go another day to give you all the glory in your name. I say this in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so, um, excuse me, I'm nervous. <laughs> okay, so um, once again, uh, just like this morning, we were having um, Sunday school. Sister Esther was going about loving God, love others. And I really get nervous, so um, this is why I decided to do a PowerPoint. I'm a visual person. And um, so the verse for today is Luke 10, 27 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor. So I'm going to go a little over each and every one. Hopefully I can make myself <laughs> understandable, and that this is what God has put in my life or in my heart to explain. As you see, the humble servant, this is going to be us one day. We're going to be humble. We're going to be on our knees giving the glo glory to our Heavenly Father. And these scrolls up here, if you can see, these are scroll scrolls of the commandments of the law of, of God. We have to remember, we have to keep the law. We have to keep humble because the, the reign of our Heavenly Father is there at the, at the top of the stairs. And that's where we're going. Each and every time we have struggles, that's another step we're going through. It's another step we go through, another trial, another breakage, another um, suffering. We get closer to the Lord. But because the stairs there doesn't mean it's easy. It means each and every step of this can, can have oil, can have water, can have agony, can have tears. It can have struggles. But guess what? He's there. He's waiting for you. So don't give up. You hold on as much as you can. And even when you can, he says, that's okay because my grace is sufficient. He says, there's a big stairway. He says, rest. Don't run up those stairs. Don't be running in your high heels and in your chanclas and you're going to fall on your face, but that's okay. Because he says, that's okay. Take your time. I want you, but at my time. Don't run to me thinking that I have to get there. I have to get there now. I have to do. I have to give away. I have to sacrifice. He says, no, you wait. I will give you sufficient. I will give you your, your armor that you need to wear. I'll give you the love. I'll give you the compassion. How do we know that? Because when we understand it's so another step we go, another step of, of spiritual level that we go. The closer we get, the harder it is. But guess what? It's not to break you, to make you stronger, to make you bolder, to make you wiser, to make you what the world is not. And we are children of God. This is why it's hard. But guess what? Once you get over that trial, you're, you don't have so much fear anymore. You don't doubt anymore. You don't go through life saying, well, what's going to happen now? You're like, Lord, it's on you. You promised to deliver me. You promised to take me through this, so I will hold on. So um, I'm going to go. Next slide, please. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you eight reasons. Well, the word says eight reasons why we should love our Heavenly Father. I have all kinds of notes, but I'm going to go off of this. <laughs> so the first one is, um, excuse me, the first one Eight reasons to love God. Why should we love God? Who is God? I mean, we all know, but sometimes we have to see it on paper. I know I do. I have to read it. I have to meditate. I have to know what you, this person's telling me about God is real. And, you know, as worldly people, we're all like, show me on paper. Prove what, that what you're telling me. If it's, if it's not on paper, we're like, ah, that's your idea. You're just making it up. But then the word says, number one, who is God? 635 says, yes. He is the bread, right? He is the bread that feeds us, not physically, but spiritually. 
because he's like, he's like the manna that God sent to the Israelites in the desert, right? He fed them all the time when they were hungry. And the Israelites were saying to Jesus, well, what are you going to do? Our forefathers were fed with manna. He's like, wait a minute. I'm going to feed you. The Lord's going to feed you, but by me. Because I am the bread. You will take part. You will partake in me. You'll be filled with me. You'll live in me. You will suffer in me. But you and I will be together. And I will walk with you. I will talk with you. I will lay with you. I will cry with you. Because you have taken me in. Everything that I am, your body and soul and mind just consumes him to where you're not fearing anymore. And number 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. The light of the world means before the Lord, before Jesus came, there was a lot of darkness. We know that. A lot of wars, a lot of um, idolizing, idolatry. There's a lot of ugliness. And people were easily persuaded to run away, persuaded to go other tribes, persuaded to intermarriage to other, other cultures and beliefs. And God said, wait a minute, something has to be changed. But my children don't see me. They don't understand. I need to send mine. So he sent his beautiful light, this everlasting light. He directs us in our path. He directs us when we read. He directs us when we pray. He directs us when we fall. He directs us in everything we do and say and act. So don't ever be afraid when you're in the dark. You call out to him. Say, Lord, show me your light. Show me where you walked. Show me where you sat. Show me where you cried. Show me where you got up once again and fought this battle that you said you have fought for me. Show me. And he will. But guess what? You've been battling. You've been injured. But he has, he has uplifted you. And you keep going. One more day that he gives you, that you're blessed, that you're stronger, and you're wiser to not to fall again as easy. Number 858. Yes, before even Abraham was, was even thought of. Why? Because the word here says in Genesis 1. Uh, 1, 1. He says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth. What does that mean? There is nothing, right? There is no, no rivers, no mountains, no plantations, no houses, no birds, not even man. So that means he existed before we even existed, before time, before creation, before anything was dwelling with life and movement. He was already there. And how is it that he's like, I'm going to create a world. Who would do that? Because he knew the destruction we're going to fall in. He knew the evil that we're going to be in. He knew. But yet he says, but I love my children. I want to make them to pleasure me. I want them to love me. I want to hear their voices. I want to hear their cries. I want to hear their sufferings. I want to know everything about them that goes to me, that empowers me, that enlightens me, that gives me more victory in the world. Because the world is nothing without me. So... And 10-9, I am the gate, right? So the gate, what does that mean? A gate that just swings, and an old gate in the wind? And, no, this is the holy gate. The holy gate that when he cr died on the cross, when his pain and agony was so filled of darkness because of you, because of me, because everybody that he carried to that cross, when he gave his last breath, that gate to heaven broke. It was destroyed. It was demolished. There's nothing that holds us between God and us anymore because he gave his life. He gave his, his self to, for us to be able to enter heaven to be in the presence of God. Who would do that? I wouldn't do it for anybody. But yet he's, he's so loving and so right. He says, but I love you. It doesn't matter if you fall in darkness. I am going to give you my life so you have an entrance to go into heaven with my Father. Because I want you to see what I see, he says. I want you to love how I love. I want you to live how I live. I want you to know who, what I know. But for now, know me, he says. Know me. Love me. Submit yourself to me. And you will see my father. 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. Wow. 
How holy and righteous is that? The shepherd that watches over us, tends to us, feeds us, gives us water, gives us, gives us hope, gives us everything we need. And yet he dies for us. He could have stayed out in, in, the, in the valley watching his sheep and just say, well, you guys find the way how to get there. I'm okay here. But he, yet he left all of us to give his life. So because he loves us that much. Have you ever stop and think about it? He wasn't thinking about himself. He never thought about himself. He thought about you. He thought about everybody that's in this room and in this world. He said, this is not for me, it's for you. Because I want you to have internal life with me. I want you to run with me. I want you to sing with me. I want you to live with me. I want you to see just how holy heaven is with, is with my father, he says. I love you that much. So you hold on. The next one, 14.6. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> uh, uh, so he is the way. You want an example? You want to know how to get there? You want to know how to hang on? There he is. You want the truth? You want somebody that doesn't lie? You want somebody who doesn't put a, a robe or a bag over your head and leads you in the dark? You want somebody that, that says, I've lived your life. I know your pain. You want to know somebody that says, don't give up. I've been through that. So everything that he is, everything that we want, everything is at, at the stretch of our hands. So it's up to you and I. Do we want everlasting life? Or do we want a short, happy, merry, temporal life? Because we know this life is not forever. Next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I am the true vine. So he's the true vine. He's, he's the vine. We, we know the, the tree of knowledge and the tree of life, right? The tree of life is our Heavenly Father and our God. Our Jesus is the vine. And he's, he wants, he's growing in the gospel. He's growing, reaching out. He's growing, showing love and compassion. If we go into Jesus, we become, um, what do you call it? Um, when they get the branch and they, and they put it together so they can grow together. What do you call that? It's graphing. We're, we need to be grafted into Jesus so we can become the vine in God. And how do we know that we have been grafted? Because the fruits. Are we compassionate? Are we loving? Are we forgiving? Are we able to look past what the hurt has been done to us? That's the fruit. That's it. Not how much money you got. What kind of clothes you wear? What, what, what store you shop at? Who you hang with? It's about what's in here. Because guess what? The day is going to come. We're going to be in front of our Heavenly Father. And even though we know what we can take, it's our heart. We think, that's it. But guess what? God is so merciful. He's going to say, oh, you made it. I love you. But don't think you're alone. We're like, what? But you said I can't bring nothing. He's going to say, look behind you. You're going to look. You know what's behind you? Your family, your neighbors, your enemies that are searching to get to that same path you have come to. Isn't that awesome? By your example, you will change other people's lives. You think you're nothing? You think nobody knows you? God knows you. And people are watching you. They're looking at you. And let them look as judging. Because you know what? We have the word. We have the truth. We have salvation that the world can never break down. Because the Lord um, promised to give us victory in his name. So now, um, so the, the verse says, love God with all your heart. And James 1.14 says, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away from their own desire, their own evil desire enticed. So when we start wanting to drink, play a lot of Nintendo, drugs, TV, what have you, alcohol, we turn them to our God. We turn to that as our love, first love. We turn to all that, and we put God as second, maybe third, fourth, 101, because I know I put him there. He was number 101, but now he's number one. So, so this is what he means. The way you crave, the way you love, the way you want this, want God. Love him. Look for him. Fall in love with him every day. And Mark 10, 9 says, therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. The marriage, everybody thinks, of course, marriage, man and woman. 
Oh, no. Marriage is when we are bonded with God. When we start looking for other things, we start looking for, for alcohol, for men, for women, for Nintendo, we start divorcing our God. We start walking away from him. We start choosing others. We start choosing other things. And we don't know it, but we're divorcing from, from the Lord. That's why the Lord says, no, come back. Come back. I'm waiting because I want to put this ring back on you. Asha has never left you. you. You have taken it off. Put it back on. And wear it as the prince and princess that you are in my kingdom. In 2 Timothy 3, 2, people will be lovers of themselves. How many selfies do we see? How many selfies do we see of the same person again and again and again? <laughs> so vanity sits in. Now all of a sudden, all we want to know is about me, what I wore, what I bought, what I just put on, what somebody let me borrow, or what I stole. Look what I have. Look who I am. Look how much money I have. Look who I'm dating. Look who I'm, Lord, forgive me. Look who I'm bagging. <laughs> you know, all that. But, and then that's when we put ourselves as number one as our God, right? We take ourselves away from God again because our heart is about us. It's not about a God. Because once we have God, all of this will go away. It will be there, but won't be as tempting. The last one, 1 Timothy 6.10, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. What do we do for money? We get jobs. We do side jobs. We put yard sales. We go to casino. But sometimes that entices and wraps up so much in our lives we forget how to give God the glory and how we forget to depend on God to provide. He's promised that he's provide. But yet we're so short-minded, so stubborn. We want more and more. We start lying. We start cheating. We, we start defrauding. We even lose our homes, our families, even ourselves. And now the money is number one. So if we do all this without putting God first, this will be our lives. What do we want? We want all our heart to be on the Lord because he will give us sufficient armor to beat this. But that's to your choice. Next, please. And now we're going to love our God with all your soul. How do we love him with all our soul? James 4, 5, 14. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. When we start getting weak, we start getting tempted because it will happen. And it does happen. We start falling. We start running away. Go to church. Ask your pastor. Ask your elders. Ask your best friend. Ask your neighbor that you know they're in God. Tell them, pray for me. I'm growing cold. I'm growing weak. I don't know what to do anymore, but help me because it's going to happen. So you, this is what we do. We turn on that Holy Spirit. We bless him with the Holy Spirit that helps us. It can help them. We know that. Number two, Matthew 18, 20. For where there are two or three, gather my name. There I am with them. I just said that. Get together with somebody that knows the word, that practices the word. You see they're on fire for the word. Even it's, if, if it's a stranger, you go to them and say, hey, can you pray for me? Sister, can you pray for me? Hey, send a text. Hey, I need prayer. Got to lift up that spirit because that's where it will convict you from going back to those temptations. But we don't have prayer it's easy. It's like we open the doors and the windows of our homes, of our shelter. No, I, I don't want no wind, but let me open the doors and the windows. Where did that wind come from? Hmm, I wonder. But anyway, so in 1 Timothy 4.12, don't let anyone look, anyone look down on you because you are young. Put a set example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. That means just, just because you're young in age, it doesn't just mean that. But somebody like me that just came to the word, I'm not young, but I'm young in spirit. So he's saying, no matter what age you are, you have to start somewhere, and I love you. You show the older people or the younger people who I am in you. You forgive them, you love them, you address them, you preach to them, you embrace them, so they can see me, because I use everybody. I don't just choose you and you and you. I choose everyone that is enabled to open their hearts to me, and I will equip them. Next slide, please. Love your God with all your strength. Yeah, I was this kid one day. <laughs> I was young and strong, but I still am, but spiritually. 
So James 5, 1 says, if, you, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So if you think that you can't do nothing, you can't overcome something, look for the Lord. He will remind you, but you're my soldier. You're my warrior. You're my loved one. And even if we can't fight, he says, that's okay. I will hold you. I will carry you. I will feed you. I'll do everything for you because that's how loving and awesome of a God I am. I will never forsake you, leave or forsake you. Isaiah 40, 29 says, he gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. That means people who are weak in the soul. Oh, but I don't know. I lost my job. I lost my marriage. Oh, what am I going to do? I can't feed my children. I can't do this. He's like, wait a minute. What have I promised? I have provided. Not only that, everybody that thought you were just a pushover, that they can kick you around, guess what? I'm going to give you words to defend you because you're defending me. They will be intimidated where they will keep quiet and watch. Because they'll be all like, why don't they fight back? Why don't they tell me an evil word? Why don't they get angry? Oh, I, can't, I can't curse them anymore. There you go. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil schemes. Once again, we have to put the armor of God. I want you to see, David here, what is he wearing? Just this line cloth, a, a slinger, and a sword. What? Well, that's Goliath's sword. God gives each and every one of us an armor, spe armor specially made for each and one of, every one of us. So don't think you're going to get this big old golden armor. You're going to get this, this hat. You're going to get all this. Because the armor I wear, Sister Esther can't wear. What Sister Esther wear? Sister Elsie can't wear, because we're individual, we're special, we're loving, and we have been more made in his perfect image. So don't ever try to be anybody else. Don't ever try to follow anybody, uh, anybody else, but follow God. Follow his perfect example. Follow his perfect love. Follow his perfect compassion, and you will be blessed with more. Next slide, please. Love your God with all your mind. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what, what God's. That means don't believe all these new religions, these new ways to think, a new way to do this, a new, a new way to do that, because time will pass, fast will pass. There's all kinds of fashions and thinking that's going on. Don't get caught up with it. Stay with the truth. He will tell you what's good and what is not good. He will tell you who you are and who you're not are. He will tell you what to expect and what not to expect because you're his, and he just wants the best for you. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Because you have peace in God, you don't not, you're not going to have doubt. You're not going to be thinking. You're not going to be wanting to try. You're like, it doesn't matter what you do, what they do, what they believe, what idol they worship today, what music they play today. My God is true. He's been the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow as I will because this is what he commands for me to be at his feet, and that's the highest place I want to be at. Lamentations 3, 22, 24, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. The Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. So because he loves us, he doesn't give us everything when we want it. Things don't happen when we want it because it's not his timing. But yet, he's so sovereign. He, he keeps saying, my grace is sufficient. Just hold on. You, you don't know the, the victory and in, in the, in the crown I have waiting for you. Believe in me. I am, he says, I am is all you need of him. You just need him. Next. Now we're going to go to how to love your neighbors. How do we love our neighbors? Accepting everyone, others. Romans 12, 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another before ourselves. So let's not look at skin, at culture, as language, anything else, because we all come from the same God. We all come under the same glory. We all come from the same love. We all come from the same creation. We're all going to go back again to heaven. We can't get along here. How are we going to get along over there? Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short, short of the glory of God, and we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. We all have been sinners. Because somebody comes from another culture doesn't mean they're better. doesn't mean that I'm better. doesn't mean I speak wiser. 
It means we all have fallen, we have, all have darkness, we all have trials, we all have that. So we have to see each other the way God sees us. Uh, Malachi 2.10, have we not all one father? Did not one God create us? Why do we profane the covenant of our fathers by breaking faith with another? Um, it's about a little what I said. We are created under the Father who has created us. So let's not go against somebody else that has a different skin, different language, different dressing, different thoughts. Let's embrace them and accept them. Because once you accept them, you get to know them. Then you know why they do what they do. Then you know why they speak the way they speak. Then you're like, oh, I get it. And then you speak more of the Lord. And now we all the same, same color, same ethics, same culture, same everything. That's what God wants because we're from him. And Leviticus 19.33, when an alien lives within, with you and your land, do not mistreat him. Alien. Hmm. Aliens. Let me see. I think about Mexicans crossing the border without papers. <laughs> I think about, you know, people that don't come. It's like, you know what? Sorry to say we're all aliens. Why? Because we, we live in the world, but we're not part of the world, right? We're all going to go back to heaven. We came from heaven. We're going back. We're just here for a little bit. We're all going to go back. We're all aliens. So let's not disgrace, interrupt other people's lives, but with the word of God. That's the only way we should communicate with everyone. Next, please. Love your neighbor by forgiving them. Revelations 21 says, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the older of things have passed away. Matthew 6, 14 says, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That itself, I shouldn't have to explain that. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify pure us purify us from all righteousness. So when we tell him our sins before we go and tell somebody else what they're sinning about, he'll give us the right and the justice to be able to tell him because we'll tell him with the love instead of anger and judgment. Luke 23, 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes. Oh my God. The forgiveness if Jesus forgave when he was hanging on that cross and people were throwing the dice for his stuff, it was a mockery. How dare they? But we want to be all hurt, but about, oh, she's not looking at me today. Oh, she's not talking to me. Oh, look. at What the heck? Forgive them. Talk to them. They don't want to listen. Talk to them the next day. Love them. Pray for them, if nothing else. And wait. Their hearts will be softened. But you got to wait. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ. God forgave you. We all know that. To receive kindness, we got to give kindness. To receive compassion, we got to give it, just like it was said earlier. We cannot give what we don't have. And how do we get it? Looking for God. Next one, please. We love our neighbor unconditionally. Job, Job 4.32. 42.10, after Job had pray, prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Why? Because he was there for his friends. He prayed for them. Just how we need to pray for people who are sick, people who are ill, people who go through temptations, people who are hurt and broken, people who do evil, people who, who steal, people who do, do things intentionally. Let's not hate them. Forgive them. Pray for them. Embrace them. Show them who, what God has done in you. Because it's not about your worries, your truth, your brokenness. It's about what God has restored in you. Matthew 25, 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. Yes, we give people something to eat. Take them to Taco Bell. We give them beans and rice. But that doesn't mean food only. It means your word, your presence, your love, your compassion, yourself. That person going to say, oh, she had, he or she has so much to do, but they took time for me. They came to my house. They fed me when nobody else would even look at me. She came and she fed me. But we have to break that pride and ask for help because people are not mind readers. And when they are, we got to pray for the soul. But we have to reach out. That's what we're here for, to help and love each other, uplift each other, to go to the glory of God. 
Deuteronomy 15, 7. If there is a poor man among your brothers in any of the towns of the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your poor brother. That means don't be tight. <laughs> if you have an extra tortilla, give it to him. If you have your last tortilla, give it to him. Because like it says there, if you're compassionate and you share, guess what? We'll be like Job. We'll get double the portion. But let's not wait for the portions and money. Let's wait for the portions of love, compassion, the strength to go on to help others. John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for his friends, for one's friends. So I, we should pray for our friends and enemies, feed them, embrace them, clothe them. Doesn't mean with coats, it can, but it means clothe them with, with love, with your time, with your effort. Give them a ride to school, to work, just down the street. Their tummy hurts at night, they're calling you. Pray over the phone. You don't have to go over there. But let them know it's okay. Call me. Anytime, anywhere you feel the need for prayer, call me. Next, please. So, almost to the end. <laughs> I promise. Uh, so, love God, love other. What does that mean? There are rewards. What are these rewards? Rewards we're going to get. Hmm, let me see. The reward for well done is the opportunity to do more. Even, even though you're like, oh, man, I have to do it again. But this time, because you have been given so much, you're like, oh, I need to share this. I feel like I'm going to burst at the seams because that joy and that love, like, Lord, how is it that you chose me? You speak to me. You show me this. It's, it's, like, it's like when the woman of the well went, spoke to Jesus, and Jesus said, I can give you the water, the everlasting water. What did she do? Did she just sit there and say, oh, okay, but um, do you have a cookie to go with this water? No, she ran. Hey. Guess what Jesus did? Guess, what Jesus, guess who Jesus healed? Guess who Jesus gave life to? Guess who has come from the death to be alive again? Guess who did that? So when Jesus does any of those to you, share it. Because then you share his power and his glory. So what are the rewards? We are accepted from Christ. Wow. He accepts us. He doesn't say, well, wait a minute, um, what, do, what degree do you live in or do you have? What um, neighborhood do you live in? What culture do you come from? He's like, no, because he sees our hearts. What, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> the next one, Mila. And then we have the relationship with Jesus. How awesome is that? We have a relationship with Jesus, the almighty Jesus who lived the dead from the tombs himself even the one that went and cured leprosy the one who 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 made the blind see those who can who were dumb that were able to speak i me i barely have a high school degree yeah <laughs> well you know it's like wow but yes he says but you're not of the world you're mine and we also have salvation to where we don't worry about tomorrow. We don't worry if we're going to die. We don't worry if we're going to be in an accident. We're not going to worry. It's not like, it means, oh, I'm going to run out to the car. I'm, I'm going to have salvation. No. He says, you know, I know where my spirit is going. I know this is only a little time, but I will have more. I will have an abundance of love, abundance of life, and I'll have joy and peace forever and ever. How awesome is that? You have eternal life. You'll never die. Your body will never shrivel, never get diabetes, you never get high blood pressure, you'll never grow, sh you won't shrink because your bones are deteriorating, <laughs> you won't gain the weight, you won't lose the weight. You'll be perfect and beautiful, beautiful children, so awesome. And we all get to sit at the glory, at the table of our heavenly Father. And when we sit, we're not just going to see the person in front of us, we're going to see everybody. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. And then we, we have the ability to share the good news, just like I'm doing today. You can go out and share the news. You can be the only Bible somebody hears in their life. And you never know, you will change somebody's destiny. That's been damned. It will be re-gived through you. Next one. Here, I love this one. So Jesus carries us 
No matter if we're blemished, we're deformed, we're defected, we're ugly, we're fat, we're skinny, we're tall. He's like, don't worry, I got you. I got you. I will carry you to my throne. Don't do this on your own. I'm there for you. And once we know the word, we pray, we meditate, and we take Bible studies, we, we go to church, we have fellowship, that when we go to other places and we don't recognize the word from our God, we keep eating off the land. We keep taking it what the world is giving us, darkness and ugliness. We're like, this is all it is, so this is all I'm going to get. But when we hear the word, we hear of Jesus, we hear the love, what do we do? What? What? What did he say? What did she say? Why does that feel good? What is, why does it feel like, I know this person, I know this word, I know this spirit, I can see something different in them. Because we are th- not that. <laughs> because we are that, la- that sheep. That is you, because you are my sheep, hear my voice, and I know then that they follow me. Because you keep the commandments, you keep the law, you keep his love, you keep his, you keep everything, even though it's breaking you down, you're like, but it's not for me, it's for you. And guess what? You get up once again to do it all over again. I know it's, a, it's heavy and a hard life, but it's a blessed life that nobody can take but you and I. For some reason, he's chosen us because he loves us. He has restored us. He has rebuilt us. We have, he has reestablished himself in us. So I pray that every day we take that, that initiative to do better. Not the best, because there's only one best but we can do better. And every time, I don't know about you, but every time I hear about somebody speaking the word and I hear them, I'm like, woo, yeah, yeah, get in my way, I'm gonna step on you. <laughs> this is just, he just fills your heart with so much joy, you just wanna, you know, just, that, yeah, like that. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, how is it that you love me? How is it that you save me? How is it that you know me? How? I'm no one, I'm broken, I'm shattered, I'm abused. But he says, I don't see that. I see this. I see wholeness. I see, I see purity. I see righteousness. I see worthy. I see myself, he says. Wow. And the last one, yes, it's almost over. This is what we're all striving for. They hear those beautiful, awesome, internal, ever-glowing words of our, our master, our, our king, our God, our father, our life, our, our reason to go forward, our light, our strength, our soul would say, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come. This is where we're going to get the victory of life of the crown. And he's going to say, not because you were a pastor, not because you're a bishop, an evangelist, an apostle, a preacher, a ministry, missionary, a teacher, a singer, a worshiper, a mother, a father, a neighbor, a a gardener, a, a president, but because you were a humble servant, you have gained victory. And how do we gain victory? Can you go back slide one, please? How do, how do we gain victory? Can we read this together? Love the, the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor. So this is my little outline. I'm a visual person. I can't read and just store it all. There's too much alcohol. <laughs> So, and even then, I don't know what happened. Too much abuse. But anyway, God is good. Whatever God gives you, you take it. If he gives it to you on paper, write it. If he gives it to you in your mind, show it. If he gives it to you in your heart, share it. If he gives it to you in your feet, go preach the word. If he gives it in your hands, Dial the number, text the number. Hey, God loves you. God is searching for you. God is looking for you. God wants you. God wants you now. Time is short. Get right with me, he says, because I want you with me. I don't want you to perish. You're mine. You're my vine. My son is giving you his life for you. Your life is so precious. My only son, he says, my only son. 
I told him maybe, I don't, this, is, this is me. And he said, no, no, son, don't do it. But Father, they're my brothers and sisters. They're my love. They're my neighbor. I got to do this because nobody else will. How awesome is that? Somebody say, it doesn't matter if you sin. It doesn't matter if you're broken. It doesn't matter if you don't know the word. It doesn't matter if you know how to speak. It doesn't matter if you don't write and, and read. What matters is that you believe that I exist, that I was born from a virgin named Mary. I was crucified on a cross. I have overcome the tomb in three days. I, on the third day, have rest up, resurrected in all my glory. I have been seated at the right hand of my Father, and I'm saving this table. Uh, it has your name on it. Do you want it? Do you desire it? Do you pray about it? Do you seek it? What are you doing? I'm just telling you, life is short. It's getting shorter. The world's getting darker. It's falling even more. Where are you going to stand when they ask you, do you choose God or do you choose the world? Do you take the chip or do you have your head chopped off? What are you going to do? We didn't come to this time to have glory in ourselves, to get drunk, to have a good time, to wear the short shorts. Well, because I can't wear it anymore. But anyway. But um, even the guys, they're, they're becoming too feminized. You need to stop that. Be the man that you are. Be that handsome, awesome man that you are. Wear your rugged beard. Wear your rugged mustache. Wear your rugged hair. Be what God has made you. Stop, ladies, too. Stop transforming yourselves into something that you're not. Because you know what? When we, we abide by all this, the beauty of our God radiates from the inside out. People will hear him. People will see him. People will know him. People would be with them, and you're like, what? And they're going to say, yeah, I see him in you. What, me? I hear him how you speak, me? I see how, how, how you, you are, me? And God says, yes, because I am in you. You have accepted me, so I will dwell in you. I will sit on that throne that in your heart, and I will tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And you're like, wait a minute, I'm going to have somebody tell me what to do. I've done that all my life. He goes, but now you have internal life. Before, you only had a short life. So once again, what's your choice? You want our Heavenly Father with internal life? Maybe eternal sufferings for, or temporary sufferings, but internal glory, internal health, internal joy, internal of Him. So I pray each and every day for each of us that we learn how to love God, how to come to God, how not to be ashamed of Him. Because he's waiting, and if you're already there, embrace him more, pray more, meditate more, and you'll be amazed. He'll start revealing himself to you through visions, through speech, through compassion, through patience. You're like, man, you would ask me five years ago. I was like, hey, I'm not going to wait for them. And I was like, it's okay. Take your time, but you know you're running late. It's okay. There's a purpose why we're going late. Not my purpose, his purpose. So we just take it, embrace it, and believe. Thank you. Thank you for it. Thank you.